Hi guys, this is Matt with the Creating Worlds podcast, and this is a demo of how I use my Prismacolor brush in Photoshop. The other day I recorded a video demo showing um, how I use some of my line work in Photoshop, uh, but this is my main tool. This is the first tool in my brush palette, my Prismacolor Photoshop. So we'll go ahead and after I uh, start and, and rest stop and restart the video podcast with no sound so that my wife and I can talk and uh, we can listen to a show. Um, I'll go ahead and show you that. So I might record my voice later talking over what I did. Let's see, that way I don't have to also talk while I paint. All right, so here I just showed uh, resizing the prism color brush and here I'm showing off some of the environments that I created mostly using that Prismacolor brush. I'm working on an open source game and so the game developers have given me carte blanche to sort of create you know whatever I feel like and uh, game developers will do that a lot. They'll come to the concept designer and say just create you know some cool environments, give us something to think about, um, you know something to set our characters in. So um, unlike thumbnailing I, I typically paint a whole lot with this brush and create um, separate concepts instead of you know creating thumbnails and then basing the concepts off of that. Um, at this at this time I'm not really great with uh, thumbnails and I'm, I have been very pleased with my results from thumbnails. So uh, thumbnails is a, a really an art in itself and um, I think every concept should concept artist should learn how to thumbnail very well, but it's something that you know takes time to learn. When you paint trees um, with some uh, with uh, except for a few trees, you should always paint trees sort of with a curve. There isn't a tree out there except for a few um, species of trees that are straight and so uh, you know you go to a park maybe you'll you'll see something that looks straight just give it a little bit of a curve give it some character um, paint your your trees with a little bit of character and it'll give you a much more interesting uh, concept and feel to it So the Wacom settings for that brush are, I just set the shape dynamics um, and the size to be defined by pen pressure. And it's a uh, rectangle that's tilted at 78 degrees. And then the opacity is also sent to pen pressure. That's it. Um, when I'm painting silhouettes, I'll turn that uh, pen pressure off uh, for the opacity. And I'll show that also at a later date. One of the problems that a lot of um, beginning artists have when they're trying out something new is that they'll try out some new method that somebody taught them, something they learned in you know, a magazine or something, and uh, the, the results will really suck at first, and you just have to get over that. You just have to know that you know if you're trying out something new, um, it, it, a teacher once told me anytime you're trying out something new when it comes to art, um, this was from a uh, master workshop that I took and actually the teacher was Craig Mullins. Um, he said, you know, almost every single time you're trying out something new in terms of methods, it's going to suck at first so you just have to get over that. Another thing that um, another teacher said is that there's not just one method, and actually Craig Mullins kind of alluded to this in his class. There's not just one method that you use. Um, there's a variety of methods, and you just kind of use whatever is going to work at that current moment. Um, the developers like these semi-defined uh, concepts, and I can then take this and later define it if I feel like it. And, you know, just painting in sort of blobs of value is a great way to come up with you know, 
a general something that you can maybe play off of. So, you know, don't just stick to one method. Use a variety of methods. Here in a bit, you'll see me erase this tree. And one of the most important things about painting is it's, it's not about what you paint in, but sometimes what you leave out. And, uh, you know, sometimes a better artist will just keep something simple and leave something out rather than paint something in. And, and later on in the video, you can see I totally erase that tree out and I, I get um, a different feel to the ground plane. That ground plane looks like it's um, edging off into a cliff and later on it'll start to feel like it uh, it's at the bottom of a cavern. As you get to be a better artist you just learn to make less mistakes. I think that all of us have a, a pretty good artist in them. It's just you know your, your own stupidity and and um, inability to recognize what you should be doing uh, takes over. And so the, as, as you get to be a better artist, you just make less mistakes. You also arrive at conclusions faster. You, you say, okay, well, you know, it's not working. You just need to get it out of here. And some of those conclusions, as you get to be a better artist, are just found within seconds instead of you know, found within minutes. Um, painting this quick little concept actually took me um, the better half of an hour, and so I, normally they don't take me that long. But you know, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, share this video with you, and because it's got a lot of great things going on with it, regardless of taking so long. Um, concepts like this shouldn't take this long. I should arrive at something that I like within 15 minutes to half an hour, but you know that sometimes that happens. Um, if if you saw my eyes and the way I was expressing myself in the very beginning of the video, you can tell I was really really tired, and uh, I have a one-year-old and a three-year-old right now, and so as a parent, you know I lose a lot of sleep. So here I'm getting in sort of the walls of that cavern, and I really like this brush because it gives me a, a variety of, of looks, and it's, you know, it's never quite the same. Um, it's very dynamic. I kind of wanted to define the edge of that cliff a little bit sharper, get a little bit of more contrast. The harder you press, um, the further towards the foreground the uh, the value goes you know considering that black is, and and bright white is closer to the foreground all right so here I'm sh sharpening it just kind of seeing what it looks like if I sharpen it doesn't really make that much of a difference and right now I'm just fixing thing things but that's basically the the concept created with this brush. If you have any questions about anything in this podcast, please check out creatingworldspodcast.com and you can email me at creatingworldspodcast at gmail.com.